Yeah. This is most unusual. Hello, welcome. Thank you. Who are you? I'm Max. I'm Rila. Rila? Yes. Nice to meet you. Why have you called me here? I became fascinated about elves. I, um, I li listened to a lecture about elves and dwarves and realized that I might be a descendant of elves. I might have some elf genetics. And I, 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 Few humans are, have descendants from elves or fairies or dwarves. Uh huh. You must have done a great kindness to one of them in order to be hybridized. How long ago do you remember being in contact with elves? I don't. I don't. I just heard about the features of the hybrids and I thought they might have them. What I don't know for sure. What makes you think? What qualities? Um, you know, I'm blanking on that. I can't answer now. At some point, I, I had some ideas, and right now I can't say anything. Well, let me look inside. Thank you. Go ahead. There is a distant elf relationship, but it was thousands of years ago. But the thing is about that, your ancestors must have been very kind to the earth and must have been in very good harmony with the elf population and the elemental population. Uh-huh. Hmm. So is, uh, are, are you elementals or, or not? We are all elementals, yes. Uh, who created you? We are created for this world. God creates us for each planet. For each planet needs a different kind of elemental. Uh, so it was an extraterrestrial who created you? No. I see. Uh huh. We are here because the Earth, Mother Gaia, is need of us. Uh huh. We are here because w this is the planet that we were created for, and we must take care of it. Yes, we live and we die. We can be killed, but. For the most part, we can live for many thousands of years as well to uh -huh. take care of what we need to take care of. We are replaced carefully. Oh, so you, you don't evolve? There is evolution, but not the same way as on your planet. We evolve in knowledge and understanding of the, the way your planet is being treated. We are uh -huh. evolved to understand chemicals and we evolve to understand uh, the ways of the sun as it changes in the atmosphere, as it becomes stronger because the atmosphere has changed as well. We evolve that way. I understand. Yeah, I was thinking about that kind of evolution. We also evolve in a, in a, uh, in a way, not, in non-genetic ways as well. In, yes. In non-genetic ways in, as well. So Correct. there is some... some there uh, is some genetic change, if necessary, to become more 
attuned to the situation. Let me be clear. If we are to be near chemical spills or things of that nature, our chemistry can withstand any kind of doses of these kinds of negative things and uh -huh. we can still survive so we will mutate ourselves genetically to be able to be around things that need fixed that are not natural that is how we were created i see um are you are you capable of shape-shifting there are some of us that are. Uh, do, do, you do, do you have the cities under the water or under the ground? Yes, but you will never find them because they do not look like cities. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, are you comfortable living in the water? We were made to be comfortable here. Uh-huh. So, of course, we are comfortable wherever we are. And in the underground, do you have to create space, like, uh, to have air in there? Or how do you, how do you live in the underground? Or we do, you do not need air to survive. But we need to understand air to know what, how the land creatures and plants and animals survive. Mm -hmm. But we ourselves do not need air. Uh, can you move through the, through the rock? Do you need to make holes or can it just uh, kind of shift we through can, the rock without touching it? There is preparations that we take and make mm -hmm. that we can move through solid objects if necessary. So it's not normal, like you have to do a special magic to do it or special technology to do it, right? As there is special times, yes. I see. Uh -huh. So uh, what is your normal appearance? Our normal activities... Appearance, are, appearance. I asked about appearance. I'm sorry. Our appearance? Yes. Well, we're very small. Uh-huh. The tallest of us are maybe two feet tall. Uh-huh. The smallest, maybe a half a foot. Uh -huh. But elementals come in those, in every size in between there. I see. Uh -huh. There are a few that have had to become larger, but only for special, only for special reasons. Do you procreate? No, we are created. I see. Uh, so you're not not mammals you're, you're not close no. to humans at all no but you have a shape of a human like are you bipedal yes. yes we look sort of human we have a different coloring it's more of a green coloring we can hide in nature much easier we have brown clothing brown tones green tones some have yellow and orange. Easy to hide, though. Do you eat food? What? Do you eat food? We do eat, but it is only for fun. Ah, so what's your energy source? God. Uh-huh. Mother Earth gives us also energies from within, the vortexes around us. There is elements in water that we take energy from. Do you have blood? Blood. I guess you could call it that, yes. Like, do you have bones and muscles? Yes. I see. In some, but they are not fashioned from the same materials. Oh. 
but they are do the same work. Are you material in nature, or are you you are from another dimension? They're in, uh, interdimensional. Dimension. Yes, we are not made of earth materials. Uh huh. But we work with earth materials so that we can keep it healthy. So, what is your difference from dwarfs? How, how, what's the role? What's the difference in, in the purpose? Well, we all have our own purposes. Wood nymphs with the trees and water nymphs with the water, elves with the earth, uh, dwarves with uh, collecting of things. And they're actually the uh, librarians. Ah. Are you are you are you warriors? Can you can you fight? If we need to, if something comes into our dimension that does not belong there, or to this planet that does not belong here, we will rid ourselves of it. Yes. Uh, do you fight in a human ways or, or very differently? We use magic. Uh huh. We do uh -huh. fight hand to hand if they are in the same dimension, and we are very strong and can become very much stronger. Uh, who is who is who else populates your dimension? Who else populates your dimension? There are a few others: mm -hmm. wood nymphs, elves, water nymphs. Dwarves, there are a few trolls. Mm -hmm. They do not exist as much as they used to. Mm -hmm. The trolls are protectors of the um, inner part of the earth, right uh -huh. on the surface. I see. That is why they are always under things, under rocks, under bridges, under under mm -hmm. places. They are. I more subterranean in their work. Are you uh, in peace with trolls and dwarves? What? Are you cooperating <laughs> with trolls and dwarves? Or do you have conflicts with them? They have their own hierarchy. Uh-huh. But we work together when necessary. Uh, what's your hierarchy? We have several different uh, areas of the world. And some areas of the world are more important to keep healthy than others. Those that are of the greatest importance are in those areas that must be kept the healthiest. Do you have like a, a monarchy? No. Uh, is there uh, a system a system of command? Or how do you uh, like? Is there like a hierarchical organization of the command? In some ways, yes. If if there are pressing issues that need done, the elves will take command over wood nymphs and water nymphs and trolls because oh. we're on the main earth. And we are the ones that are uh, know the most about that. So we take control during emergencies. But uh, there is no queen or king of, of elves, is there? No. There, but there, by personality, you will know who is the leader. They oh. will take charge. So there is a leader. Yes, but you have to understand this there are different kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. I may be a leader for one kind of problem, there will be a different leader for a different kind of problem. And so there, we are not named, but we stand up when our problem is at hand and take charge, for we are the experts. I see, what's, what's your expertise? My expertise is Stone and Earth. 
Uh huh. And what what are you working on? <laughs> we are working on keeping things pure from contamination. I recently uh, start, uh, bought a big bag of uh, Himalayan salt, and I tried to replace uh, my usual salt uh, with Himalayan salt. It's like pinkish. Yes. The different shades of pink. Yes. From from dark red to white. Yes. And uh, I found that I got diarrhea from this salt. If I completely replace normal salt with the Himalayan, I get diarrhea. So yes, I'm kind of because it is not from your part of the earth. I see. But you then must, I okay. you can align with it eventually. Uh -huh. But it will take some time for you to get used to one another. Yeah, that's what I feel like. It's not that poisonous, I just kind of get, uh, it's unusual for me. Uh huh. So uh, I also bought a good filter for the water. So I get very pure water. Yes. Uh, and um, I was told that. Uh, just water without salt is not good because it kind of pulls out too much from your body. So, so I wonder if I should add some minerals to the water to make it uh, healthier. If you are drinking pure water, that is not a bad thing if your uh -huh. diet is proper. If your diet is improper, then drinking pure water will pull out too many things. However, uh -huh keep your diet balanced, then you will be fine. Oh. All things will work as they should. Uh, but still, I just want, thank you. I, I just wonder if there is like some, some fancy salt. So far, I just put a few, draw, a few crystals of Himalayan salt in the water That's and experiment fine. with that. But I wonder maybe there are some other crystals, uh, some this, uh, sol solvable uh, salt combinations which could be dropped in water and make it even healthier and structure it in a special way. I would have to know a little bit about, about more about human physiology ah, to I be see. able to help you. I know more about the construct of the earth and the, and the trees than I know about humans because we do not take care of humans directly. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Each human is made slightly differently and has a different chemical makeup that is specifically their own. So I would have to study you a little before I would give you some recommendations. Um, also, there was a story that you become vampires if you want to. Can, can, is it true? Vampires? Yeah. No. Okay, so that's who that vampire could it be like something negative? Yeah, we, there are was, not, we are not created in negativity. Uh, so there, there was a creature uh, who was uh, created by the by the extraterrestrials, and it would uh, can be a, a human vampire or uh, a, a mermaid or uh, a, a, a werewolf. And it would transform, transform from one to another to another. Do you know this creature? Well, I know the mermaid beings were here, but they have left. Uh huh. And, and there has been stories about werewolves and vampires, but they are very uh, in very obscure areas of the planet. And I, it has been said that they were there at one time in the Transylvanian areas and all those areas of uh, Bulgaria, Romania, mm -hmm. those places did have an infestation at one time of werewolves and such, but I do not think that exists any longer. I see. Thank you. So there was confusion, I guess. Yep. I was listening to lectures that uh, assigned these properties to elves. No. So, okay. That is impossible. All right. Uh, and the last question I had, I'm running out of time, but the last question was uh, in the same lecture, which, which was incorrect. It, it was said that uh, 
shamans are genetic, have genetic mutation which uh, comes from their elf ancestry, and uh, that mutation makes them good uh, mediums and channelers and allow them to uh, bring in other spirits and uh, let that spirit to populate the body. So there, there is some truth to that. Let me tell you why. Shamans, mm -hmm. for the most part in the ancient days, were great manipulators of magic, and they did have um, the help of the elementals when doing positive work for the earth. Mm -hmm. And shamans back then did work for the earth at some points. And so, yes, we did help them and, and give them energies and magics. Now, there was a point when there was relationships between elves and shamans, but that has since passed. And the reason is there, had, there were some situations where the shamans were disrespectful. Uh -huh. And so the relationships between humans and uh, human shamans and elementals was ceased. Uh, another part of the question was, is there a special genetics to the shamans and does it come from elves? The, the, the magic portion is what's different. They have an unusual capacity for it and are able to, uh, yes, and also elves have a certain dimensional magic, if you will, that mm -hmm. they can use as well. So yes, they are slightly different than normal humans, but you don't have many of them that exist right now. Right. So is it a special Not bloodline, likely. special genetics, or is it just more like a, something acquired, which can be acquired? It's both. You can, it can be natural, but you can acquire more. I see. Thank you. It was very helpful and it was nice to connect to you. I, uh, I feel very good about that connection with Elves. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It was good to speak to a human. Nice to speak to you. Interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. Hello?